What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to the Walsh Way here with Aberwith Swift Town. So apologies for the lack of uploads recently, I have been ill and I did actually record the Champions League qualifier uh, before, like, as the illness was coming on. So in the next episode if you hear maybe sniffling or things like that, it's because I was starting to get ill. I'm still not fully over it but I felt like you guys wanted to see it, or needed to see an episode basically, I wanted to put one out for you. So, here we are at the end of season update. So, 18th of June, this is when our end of season message comes through and we have to confirm if we're going to the Invitational Leagues. And let's just look at a few things. So, we won it, of course, we got our first ever treble season. We finished first, uh, we're considering the overachievers of the league, although I still really see that. And Athen Lido finished 10th, did they get relegated? Um, I feel like they almost did, they go at one point saves them in the end so that in itself is pretty crazy but let's go and look at the league itself so end of the season we finished with 25 wins six draws and only one defeat and i mean you can probably guess who that one defeat was against and it was tns so they prevented us from going the whole season undefeated we drew six games in comparison to tns's one but the fact that they lost so many games ended up helping us win the title so we scored 84 goals which is the second highest in the league but we only conceded 20 so 32 games, 20 goals conceded. What is that? That is 16, uh, 1.6 goals a game. So that's about, yeah, about two goals a game. Wait, no. I got every two games. Sorry, there you go. So that's, that's pretty good. That is like, that is an amazing stat. And if I got that match wrong there, yeah, I don't really care. <laughs> but yeah, we've been very solid defensively this season. And going forward, we definitely shone in the latter stages of the season once we got the more consistent squad back out after being knocked out of the Europa League. So the league itself, it's again, it's grown in reputation. We're up to 84th league uh, in the in Europe. So that's that is massive. How well, we last year? I was scrolling through beforehand. We last year were down in 92nd. So that was definitely because of my. Of course, massive contribution to getting us to the Europa League final. I mean, not sorry, final. Getting to the Europa League group stages and getting to the Champions League playoffs. And um, I want to actually check something. Did the likes of TNS and maybe others that competed in the Europa League, did they progress out of their opening round? So TNS did. They beat Cliftonville, which is a good achievement. Um, we're in Champions League football. We know about that, of course. Bala didn't, and we should have one more team in Europe. Port Talbot didn't. So, TNS are helping us gain the league's reputation as well by progressing through their first round. And that is why, um, now when we go on Europe and we go on the Champions League and we go on, uh, what do I go on? I'm on the wrong thing. <laughs> and we go into search, we go into Europe, and we now go into nations and qualification places, we find ourselves 42nd. Which may not seem incredible, but not, I think last season we were a 46th or something. We just overtook Azerbaijan last year, which is why we got the second qualifying round entry. So if we can, again, progress past our opening round, get to maybe the third qualifying phase or the playoff phase, and then again TNS and the likes of them people doing well in the Europa League and progressing past their entry stages, we could find ourselves continually to grow out this league, and maybe in five years' time we could see ourselves, you know, amongst the likes of Serbia, Slovakia, and Hungary in terms of their qualification places being offered. And despite that may not be affecting me, because the second qualifying phase will probably be the only phase we enter in for a long time, it would help teams in the league get more money, and that would help the quality of the league increase, and then that would help them progress further in the Europa League. It would just overall benefit the, the Welsh Premier Division a lot if we could just get you know, later qualification entries in the Europa League as well as the Champions League. So, the club itself, I mean, the league, the nation itself in terms of football has grown massively. Also as well, uh, in the Europa League, no, no, Europa League, sorry, in the Champions League, um, let's go on to this and find what I want to look at. There you go, in the Champions League, uh, Bayern Munich ended up going on to win it, but that's not what I wanted to look at. I wanted to go to the group stages because I weren't really sure where this team finished. But Swansea entered the Champions League and I believe this is the first time a Welsh team as a whole 
you know, P, including those in England, have reached the Champions League uh, group stages. I believe they came third in their league. Um, yeah, they came third. Is that uh, actually was that maybe this season? I don't know. Wait. Um, no, this season they came 15th, so that's a hell of a drop, but the year before that they came 3rd, so they got into the group stage of the Champions League, and okay, they finished bottom of their group, but they picked up 3 points, so about if there was an interruption there, completely accidentally uh, clicked off Football Manager, but again, Swansea just overshadowed us this season, because we would have been the only Welsh team in a group stage of the European competitions, but Swansea had to have a great year in the Premiership, and ended up getting into Champions League group stage. But they finished bottom line with us, but they got points. That was the difference. So the club itself, in terms of our European ranking and uh, things like that, because we're turning professional, we haven't turned professional yet, I, because I've played forward a little bit, I, we turned professional on the 1st of July. So, um, basically, yeah, we won't be signing any professional deals until then. I need to click on the right stuff when I'm trying to look for it. But we have grown massively in terms of our ranking as a team and I believe we are now in the top 200 or something teams in Europe which again doesn't sound very impressive but when you consider that I took the team into Europe for the first time ever in their history back in 2014-2015 uh, we've been in Europe ever since whether that was in the form of the Europa League or the Champions League we've still been there so 245th best club in Europe is a, a good achievement you know, we're just behind the likes of Partick Thistle and St Johnston and Limfield, the team we beat in this year's competition in the second qualifying phase. A hell of certain clubs like Malmo or Motherwell or Queen of the South, Aberdeen, former winners of, you know, European competitions. So we're gaining reputation there. We were also named overachievers in the Champions League and maybe overachievers in the um, Europa League. I'm not too sure. I don't remember that. Let's see if we can... Uh, show it. God damn it. I keep on clicking on different things. Um, maybe it's on news. No, type of slip. Yada, yada, yada. That's nothing to do with us. Uh, I think I tried to save it as a note, but it never came up. Um, teams. No, players. That was not going to be it. This season. Overachievers. No. So I don't know where to find it, but we, we definitely were overachievers in the Champions League. I'm not sure if we were overachievers in the Europa League. We probably were, just for the fact we got there. But again, it's been a, it's been an incredible year for us in Europe, in the, in the European competitions. I'm hoping it'll be a good one next year as well. So, fixture-wise, we're just going to quickly skim over these from the last time you guys saw me. Where are my fixtures? Uh, uh, where are the rest of my fixtures? Okay, something's gone wrong with my fixtures. <laughs> they don't want to show me the rest of my fixtures this season. There we go. So, last time you saw me, or last time I saw you was, I believe, somewhere around here. I don't actually remember off the top of my head. But basically, we lost the TNF on the 3rd of January to 1. That was a disappointing defeat. And like I said, the only defeat of the season, so it was a real kick in the teeth. We won 1 0 down. We fought back just before half time to equalise. We could have probably nicked a draw in this game. If you look at the stats, we probably deserved a point at least, you know, we were pretty equally matched, but we just couldn't find the back of the net. David Hislop had a poor game, and he's not had the best of seasons in comparison to his previous years, so it's uh, been a bit of a off-year for him, maybe the Europa League just took him out of the swing of things, I don't know. But apart from that, a couple of key results, beating the likes of West End, Ryle 6-0, we beat TNS in the then conference playoff, conference spit, sorry, 3-1, we beat Banger City 4-1, Baller 3-0, Haverford West forced us to extra time in the Welsh Cup quarter final, we did play a rotated team which is why they ended up forcing us there and Hamilton Davis saved us in the 117th minute, Karras has prefer, uh, proved a difficult fixture this season on a few occasions I believe, only managed to beat them 1-0 in the 89th minute there earlier on in the season, beat them 3-0 very early on though, and uh, Karras is down here. They beat them 3-2 again. Very late goal. 94th minute that goal was. It was an incredible game to be a part of because I thought I'd lost it. I thought it had been thrown away. And then we fought back and picked up a result. So that was great. Being 2-0 down going back to 3-2. Port Talbot picked up a quite a shock draw against us. Had to fight back very late on yet again to just pick up a point. Elsewhere though, these last few games of the season were pretty incredible. Because we faced Bala. 
And we scored the 91st minute, the 89th minute, and the 80th minute to earn a 4-3 victory. This was incredible. Yet again, the game to be involved in. We were 3-1 down with 10 minutes remaining. We somehow fight back. Win James, Burrell, and Luke Hedge all getting on the score sheet. Then after that, we go to t we face TNS in the Premier League Cup final. We beat them 2-1. Win James getting on the score sheet after Gary McGuinness' very early own goal. And then riding James stepping up, scoring the winner. And it's the first time we won that competition in... Four years, no, I think it was the first time we won that competition in, yeah, four years, I think it was. We'd been in the final four years in a row, lost to TNS four years in a row. Finally got a little bit of revenge on them. Uh, we beat TNS 3-0 again in the last well, worst Premier League game of the season. Uh, I believe the title could still be won by them at that stage as well. Um, won, yeah, so yeah, they could have actually won it. So... That was a nervous game, it was a tense game to be involved in. They started off brightly, but we took the lead, and once we did that, we never looked like we were going to lose. So we won the league then, so cup win, league win, and then we followed up with the Welsh Cup final, which of course are live comms, and you guys saw, and it was a great result to be a part of, with a Hislop hat-trick sealing off the treble, and our first ever treble for the club, so that is the domestic season, squeezed a uh, treble winning season, squeezed in with the Europa League group stage, Beating the likes of Olympiacos, getting a draw against Basel. It, it's been an, it's been a fantastic year to be involved in, definitely. Uh, let's go into player stats though for the league. So, uh, Win James came second in top goal scorer, just one goal behind Oswell. I believe Oswell scored in his last game of the season. If I can find his forms card. Oh no, he didn't. So if, if, it, it, because we didn't play at the same time as Ballard, I weren't paying attention. But if Win James had scored one more, go actually two more goals in his in the game against TNS, the final game of the season, he would have won top goal scorer of the year. But that that didn't happen. It's quite a tough task to score three against TNS. Ryden Davis still providing an absolute service for the club. 24 years of age, not exactly the best player in terms of stats or anything, but still manages to pop up with 11 assists despite only starting 19 games. He's a he's a brilliant player for the side. And when James picked up 11 assists, if we get them 11 assists with them 24 goals, he created 35 goals for the club this season. He has been a vital part of the team, which is why when I compare him to David Hislop, I say David Hislop's had a bad season. And I'll go into the uh, players in our side more specifically in a second. But if you just see all round here, it's been a season for Win James. Second most man in the matches, second top goal scorer in the league, highest average rating, third most games won in the league, uh, drawn third in terms of assists, Fourth in shots on target ratio, and I guess it's pretty obvious that who went on to win player of the year it was Win James. Great year for the player, and really showing why I started playing him last year. He's definitely flourishing, and I'm looking forward to the next few years when he starts to just sort of peters out of his uh, development stage and starts hitting the age of like 23, 24, and we really should be hitting his prime. So, be interested to see how he goes in the next few years, especially once we've turned professional. We'll try and increase and we've got a lot of spaces to fill in terms of staff we'll try and increase the training quality we'll see how his stats increase over the years manager of the year went to me fourth time in a row fourth time I've won the league in a row aiming for the fifth and really it should be the sixth because Carl Darlington was pretty lucky to win it that year his team were in a league of their own but just made us come back with a vengeance and we've gone on to win it four more times team of the season we had one two three four five six six players in team of the season Including Ryden James, Gavin, I mean Ryden, not Ryden James, sorry, Ryden Davis, Gavin Davis, Fraser, Lloyd, Drake, Whitehouse, and Wynn James. Fra uh, Drake and Lloyd had their pretty much uh, debutant season this year. And they were great. Alright guys, sorry for the interruption there. But uh, Young Player of the Year went to Graham Chapman, sadly we didn't win that award. A TNS player walked away with that. But I feel if Wynn James hadn't have got his award for Player of the Year, he would have gone on to won that because... Basically, it would have been an injustice to him if he hadn't picked up something. So, those are the awards for the league itself. But for Wales, we, we've been no, we've been noticed yet again for the awards. So, didn't get anywhere in player, footballer of the year in Wales. I still think we're a few years off that. I mean, don't get me wrong. With the likes of Bale, John Williams, Aaron Ramsey, Ben Davis. I don't think Bale actually plays for Real Madrid much anymore. He's at Hertha. <laughs> He's on loan to Hertha. Uh, they're a decent team, up. No, no, they're not. They're not a decent team, no. <laughs> they're rich, but... Fuck me. Oh, how the mighty fool. 
don't play for Madrid, suddenly you're not good enough for any real top team. But yeah, we can't compete with John Williams, we can't compete with Aaron Ramsey, we can't compete with Ben Davis. We we can't compete on, with most of the footballers because of the reputation of the leagues they're playing in. But Young Player of the Year, we can. So when James came second, and again, I feel this is a slight bit of injustice because the guy only played 20 games and he only got 6.1, 6.81 average match rating. Okay, he's a defender, so that's quite hard to compare. But if we then compare him to Nigel Hamilton Davis... 35 games, which is 15 more games. He's gone on to score seven more goals and even created two. And then he's got a higher average match rating. And between the quality of Abba Wiswith and the quality of Hibbs now, there's not really too much difference. I think the lines kind of blur because we've got teams in like League One and the Scottish Premier Divisions chasing after my young players. So clearly we have a quality of squad which can compete with the likes of them teams. So... Do I, I feel we could have won that award, but again, I don't know what, what takes, what's what been taken into account and things like that, but I feel Win James should have gone on and won that, but at least we're being recognised for a second and third. I think this is Hamilton Davis's first time back in there winning the awards since 2017. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't get in it in 2018, did we? No. So yeah, he's been two years out, but he's come back, he's 21 and gone in there, and Win James is getting in there for the first time. So let's look at the team itself, we'll have a look at the finances, then we'll wrap this episode up. So it's been a great year, played a lot of games, ended up playing a lot of players as well. If we put everyone in the team that actually played for us, because actually we've, we've done some transfers, I completely forgot to show you that. Um, since I last saw you, Madrifa went out, Chris Rees was sold for 1.3k to Bala. Bala seemed to have money from somewhere, I don't know where. Jack Christopher was released for the second time in his career by us. Um... John Stewart was uh, sold on a free to Stevenage. He wanted to leave, so I decided to let him go. But look, Stevenage are a team in League One. Yeah, are a team in League One, and they just got relegated from the Championship. So clearly we have some decent players on our side that can compete against some big teams, or at least big teams in comparison. Gary Bruce, Brace, sorry, went out alone to Ryle. Bobby Pontry was released for the second time in his career, just about a week after he signed for us, because... Um, the, the youth intake came in and there was a pretty good left back in there so he came into the squad Ryder James went out on loan Luke, for next season this guy's on now Ryder James went out on loan to Port Talbot Luke Smolka went out on loan to Airbus Gavin O'Neill went out on loan to Port Talbot and Ibrahim Farah has been sold to Aberdeen for £775 so uh, those are the transfers in and out let's go back to the squad though so we've had a good year like I say, if we include everyone that made an appearance for our side even in any shape or form including the substitutes and things like that we played a lot of players this season and if I can I highlight I can look look at the sheer number of players that have played some figure or some part of the club this year if I untick all those out on loan and not actually playing for our team uh, that is 34 players played for our team this season. That's that's good. Like I said, we've released a lot of players as well who feature for the club. So we probably had over 40 players playing for this team in this season. So we we had a, a main first team, which is probably featured right here, actually. This is going to be the team that I'm looking at for next season. Anyway, but if you look at that squad there, there is a main first team squad here. But I do rotate players in and I feel maybe I want to give this guy a game for a change. Kevin Bland was one of them players that pretty much played in every cup game this season because he's 16, he's a right back, he's he's got bags of potential in him. And I, I don't know whether I can risk playing him in the league. I mean, I probably could against most of the teams in the league, but I feel Gary McGuinness is proven and there's no real point of dropping him out. So he gets all the cup games, I'm trying to get him out on loan, but I can't offer him to clubs yet and I can't say he's transfer. Um... Well, I can now, but I couldn't before, so that's why he couldn't be loaned out, because he's been at the club now for a year and a half. Just shows how young he is. But anyway, back to this. So, appearances. Terry Whitehouse got 44 games for the club, played the most games this season. Like I said, the, the sheer amount of rotation that the squad did. I'm, I'm surprised anyone got over 40 games for the club. So, goals. Goals scored came from the likes of Wynn James. Who did Marin Hughes play for? Monmouth. Last Division 1, he just got 10 goals. I wonder why he... 13 goals, sorry. I wonder why he's up there. So, Wynn James got 33 goals. Incredible year. David Hazel got 14. Like I said, in comparison, when I'm comparing my two strikers, which I always do, he's underperformed. He's the senior guy at the squad. He's the captain. He should be leading by example. And Wynn James has pretty much embarrassed him this season. Elsewhere, though, Viv Gunter got 7. Eddie Hislop, the backup striker, got 7 and only 9 starts, which is pretty decent. But if I'm sure if you combine these minutes, he probably adds up to about maybe 15 or so full games played 
So, again, that, that's still decent. Elsewhere, you know, a few other players chipped in, but again, sheer, sheer amount of rotation means a lot of people scored for us this season. Assists, top assist for the team was Ryden Davis. And again, despite his fact of, you know, really starting the season, I didn't really start the season as my first choice left mid. That honour went to Stuart Carey. But he came in due to injuries, and he played well and reminded me why I really need to keep this guy at the club. He will be getting a professional deal, despite, again, not looking like the best of players, just because he's a proven player at this, at this level. And I might as well have that, even if he's just going to play league games once we get in the Europa League again or whatever. He he's a player that I feel like we need at the side, and also he's a, he's a bit of the you know a bit of the history, so he's a bit of a you know monument at the side. Also, though, Win James getting up thirteen assists, Simon James getting up eleven, Stuart Carrier got eight, Gavin Davis got eight. You know, a lot of people again chipping in with assists here and there. Uh, Viv Gunter getting seven as well. Player the matches was topped by Win James. An incredible year. Viv Gunter got four, along with Gavin Davis and Alan Fraser. Hamilton Davis then, Hislop and Davis got three. Again, a lot of people picking up man of the matches, showing how dominant we were in games and in our performances. And also, Terry Whitehouse got 22 assists, 22 clean sheets in 44 starts, which, if you consider that, we played uh, six Europa League games where we didn't score a goal and we couldn't keep a clean sheet. And I don't think he kept a clean sheet against Basel either. But still, if we take out six games, that's a very good ratio. It's still even with them six games, ratio in about a clean sheet every two games. So that's, again, that's a good that's a good stat to have. And he's a solid keeper, but I've noticed his potential has been dropping. And he's 20 years of age, which means he's he's real, you know, fast developing stage is coming to an end. He's got about three years of rapid development left in him before he starts slowing down. And I'm not sure if he's good enough to try and lead me into Europe for the next few years. So I'll look what's around. I won't buy players for the sake of buying them. Well, I hope not anyway. <laughs> but, um, yeah, White House is all right for now. But like I said, I'll be on the, the lookout for a few positions. Because once we're a professional team, a lot more players will become open to us. Wages, that will all change next season once we've got the new... Um, Professional deals in and value. Our highest value players are Carwin Drake and Viv Gunter. And Drake's actually been chased by a few teams, I believe. Or is that? Yeah, Brentford and Peterborough. Peterborough Championship team. Brentford, I believe, are a Championship team. Yeah, they are. So, you know what I mean? We've we've got quality players here that are being noticed on quite high levels. And the Championship, in comparison to Welsh Premier League, even in reputation rating, is so massive. So clearly, we are doing something right with our youth setup and our training and our coaches because the players are developing at rates that basically top clubs around the UK are wanting them. So this will be it for now. We're going to quickly look at the finances where we currently have 4.5 million in the balance. We are going to be improving our training facilities that will be done on the 24th of the 10th and as I say, look, we've got a lot of staff members. We've got five staff. I can still hire for Rebel with Swiss. So we're going to be signing a lot of staff come the start of, uh, well, in the next episode, you see me at the Champions League game. And also, I don't know, I may try and upgrade training facilities again next season. I'll have a look, see how we go. And I believe the last bit of major news I want to talk about is I'm now a club legend. It's taken me, what is that, seven full seasons? Four, five titles, two years without a title. Yeah, seven seasons. And I finally made it into Club Legends. David Hislop is an icon. Ryden Davis is a legend. Again, another reason why I don't really want to sell the guy. James O'Neill is an icon. And Luke Edge is a favourite personnel. So, this will be it for now, guys. We are officially a Legends at the side. How are we doing in the Hall of Fame, actually? Before I leave... Um, basically, miles ahead right now. <laughs> and, yeah, so... Next time I meet you back will be the Champions League second qualifying phase. So until then, guys, peace out.